Now from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning, I'm Jim DeFeedy and welcome to this live one hour special edition of Facing South Florida. This morning we're going to give you all the information you'll need in advance of Tuesday's primary election. But first, we have to discuss the loss of a true American hero. Whether or not you agreed with Senator John McCain politically, you have to recognize his service and love of country. Character, courage, integrity, honor. These are the words you will hear most often in describing John McCain. And sadly, for the past two years, those words have been missing from Washington, as the presidency has turned into a cheap and tawdry reality show, and the Congress has abdicated its responsibilities. We will talk more about John McCain's life later in this show, as we are joined by one of his former colleagues, former Senator George Lemieux. But for now, let's turn back to this Tuesday's election. Now, if you believe the polls, the Democratic and Republican primary races for governor are tightening up and could come down to who gets their voters to the polls today and on Tuesday. Ah, for all you parrot heads, that was Jimmy Buffett on Thursday at a Get Out the Vote concert in Hollywood for Gwen Graham. It appears Graham and Phil Levine are neck and neck with Andrew Gillum making a push. And then there's billionaire Jeff Green. He's pulled his TV ads off the air, and then he put them back on. He seems to be fading in the polls after spending tens of millions of dollars of his own money, which means for all his efforts, he may end up with this. A t-shirt that reads, I spent $30 million of my own money to be governor, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. We'll be sending it to him after Election Day. Among Republicans, Adam Putnam and uh, has, seems to have clawed his way back into the race against Ron DeSantis. We will see some last-minute tweets by the president, I think so, to help Ron DeSantis. Now, Election Night promises to be interesting. And in advance of it, we've got a packed show. So let's get to it. Our guests include Congressman Ted Deutsch, Broward Teachers Union President Anna Fusco. In his own and in his first TV interview, State Representative Chevron Jones will talk about his decision to publicly acknowledge that he's gay. But let's bring in our first guest. Nancy Ankrum is the editorial page editor for the Miami Herald, and Rosemary O'Hara is the editorial page editor for the Sun Sentinel. Thank both of you. I, now I want to start with uh, some of the turnout so far, and let's look at the early voting numbers. As of uh, early yesterday, about 1.6 million people have voted, with 1.1 million voting by mail, and half a million folks voting in person. And here's the breakdown so far by party. Republicans are ahead 768,000, Democrats with almost 700,000 voters, and with no party affiliation, coming in at about 170,000 folks. Now, ladies, at this point, it looks like the turnout is going to be around 18 to 20 percent, which is not bad for a primary, but still, only one in five may end up voting. Rosemary, let me start with you. Is the negative tone of the advertising that we're seeing on TV having a factor, or what do you make of the numbers? Well, I think that the numbers are significantly more than in the last primary election in a midterm. Four years ago, it was about a million people voted during this by mail or early voting. So that 1.6 million have voted early is significant. I think the numbers on the Republicans show that we're not seeing that Democratic uh, that blue wave. wave. Yeah, yeah, no, we're not seeing the excitement there that I thought that we would. So uh, I think that's not a good sign. But at the same time, I was going to say, you know, today is souls to the polls. It's a very big day for often African American and Democratic mm -hmm. turnout, and Democrats do turn to do tend to turn out on election day. What do you Absolutely. make? Absolutely, I think Democrats like to show up and put pen to paper here on that day. I do think that uh, the Democrats, that blue wave, that we're not quite seeing. Uh, I think it's because there are so many candidates, especially in the gubernatorial race, and it's hard to get a bead on all of them. There have not mm -hmm. been that many debates, and when people speak in sound bites, you still end up not so, knowing who's who. So, so let's stay with the governor's race for a second. On the Democratic side, you know, are you, uh, what's your sense of the race? I, I sort of have it as Levine and Graham sort of tight, the race tightening between them with, with uh, Gillum making a late push. Is that how you see it? That's exactly how I see it. That's exactly how I see it. And I think that uh, Levine has been really working hard um, outside of South Florida where he's more well, more well known. And Graham, it was probably Graham's to lose to begin with. 
but now um, it's tightened up. Green has dropped back. I think that he has realized that people haven't gotten quite the bead on him. Well, he was a Republican when he was in uh, in California. Well, now he's a Democrat. Well, he's going to stand up to Trump, but oh, he's a member of mar lago I, I want to bring you <laughs> Rosemary in on this. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the Democratic side of things, you know, are, are the Democrats have been criticized in the past. They've lost the last five governor's races mm -hmm, they ran, mm -hmm. often by, by nominating a centrist Democrat to run. Right. Gwen Graham is that centrist Democrat. Right. Phil Levine is the more progressive of the candidates, certainly Andrew Gillum is. Right. Are the Democrats repeating history, or is there something different this time around? If they um, vote, if they elect Gwen Graham, she's more center left, and I think she'd be a good general election candidate. Um, my sense of the race is that Andrew Gillum is not surging so much. I think when you haven't been attacked like the other candidates, it's easier to bounce up. That Phil Levine got in his ground game so organized early on, got in the race early on, has a great organization statewide, is proving here at the end to... Um, that, that's a really important point, the ground game. Uh, yes. You know, you see Jeff Green has run an air war. Yeah. You can't just win by by an air war, and that brings me to the Republican side. It seems as if Ron DeSantis has tried to run a campaign that's largely an air war, primarily from Fox News. Yes. Right. Adam Putnam, you know, is sort of the candidate that's been the establishment candidate that has more of ground forces. Is is that why we're seeing Adam uh, or Adam Putnam sort of coming up in the polls in the latest days? It is days? remarkable to see <laughs> Adam making this last minute push, but he does. He knows the back alleys and corners and of Florida. And he's got the establishment with him, the numbers, and, and Ron DeSantis has not been around the state and not been really on television as much as you might think, right. except for Fox News. You know, can I add sure. one thing? You asked what's different this time uh, in, in nominating and possibly nominating a centrist candidate. What's different is context. Um, we have a Trump administration. We might have a, uh, a Republican nominee who is back by Trump and so in the context of that sort of extremism to the right Democrats might have a stomach well, and it's worth for noting, a centrist candidate. And it's worth noting, the last two elections, more than 5 million votes cast, each election, the governor's race, decided by 60,000 right. votes. So these have been razor right. thin, late exactly. night votes. Gwen Graham comes from a different part of the state. Right. So she's originally from South Florida, but she represented North right. Florida. So it's a lot of different things. I want to turn to the Senate race just briefly, even though it's not a primary result. Where is, is Bill Nelson need to be on a milk carton, Rosemary? <laughs> well, you know, he is, well, first off, Governor Scott is outspending him something like four to one. So he's saturating the airwaves. I expect that once the primary is over and we get into the general, that we will see um, Nelson um, on TV, but you're right, he has been taking a low profile and so he's been being defined by the governor in part because of exactly. this this well, Russian come on in. Right. in the exactly. elections. Absolutely. This is not uh, the time for him to really, was well, not the time for him to kind of fade away even though he doesn't have a primary candidate, mm -hmm. a primary challenger. He really needed to be front and center because, you know, we see Marco Rubio far more in the state pontificating than we do Bill Nelson. And uh, he's got a real challenge. We only here. have about 20 seconds. Is Bill Nelson, wh who was right on the on the Russian interference in the elections in Florida? Bill Nelson, was Bill Nelson right that there's influence? Well, he said that they have previously been involved or gotten into our system. Whether they are into our system now it is questionable. It seems like he got a little ahead of our skis. Yes. Got a yeah, little ahead of his skis. Yeah, All right. right. Let's, uh, let's, take a, let's take a quick break, and we'll be back right after this break.